now I guess this again is the sort of the meaty part of the topic. Um, this is where we get to go into a lot of detail with the human immune system. But I just want to make sure that we are not overwhelmed by it. Um, I will be going through this very slowly because I know sometimes I have a habit of talking fast. So I'll be slowly stepping us through through this. So trust me. Um, and of course, please ask questions um, as we go. Clarify anything that you have to. No question is a silly question. Something that is super important to always remember. No question is a silly question. So let's have a look. Firstly, we are looking at how does the body, you know, that's our practice question. How does the immune, human immune response respond to a uh, human immune system respond to exposure to a pathogen? So there are mechanisms in our body that are in place to respond to pathogens. The first um, defense, the first line of defense is part of the innate immunity. The innate immunity essentially has the first line of defense and the second line of defense. And it is non-specific, so it's non-specific to different pathogens. So it doesn't discriminate between I'm only going to work if it's a virus or, you know, it doesn't discriminate between the transmission of the, de uh, of the disease. Uh, so it's non-specific and it is, um, it is non-specific and it's fast as well. So... The first line of dis defense includes first uh, specifically um, these physical barriers, which are trying to stop the pathogen from getting in. We've got cilia, which are hair-like projections that line our airways and they move in a wave in a wave-like motion to push pathogens away from the lung. So here, um, as you can see here, they're right. This is this is an example of cilia. And what they're doing is, because they're moving in a wave-like uh, uh, motion, they're trying to push the pathogens away from the lung. And a lot of the time, the pathogens get stuck in the cilia, so they don't go through to the lung. The second one that we are looking at is mucous membranes. So mucous membranes line openings, uh, so cell, cells lining the openings of the body, they secrete mucus. And that mucus traps the pathogens and particles. So this is again important in ensuring that um, the... <laughs> the pathogen doesn't get past you know your sort of your uh, it doesn't get through to your lungs so we've got that in our noses for example so it's about ensuring that it does not get so that particles that we breathe in don't make it to the lungs then we've got chemical barriers so these chemical barriers include for example stomach acids some stomach acid is very strong um very acidic in our guts and it is all about ensuring not in the gut sorry um works obviously you know in that region with them but um stomach acid is super important in ensuring that um any harmful bacteria like they don't um survive those conditions because it is such and because it because it is so acidic uh, there are also alkali contents of the small intestine and enzymes in our mouths that again if we breathe in any bacteria or any pathogens they are uh, they ensure that again they like their very best to make sure that those pathogens don't travel down to more to our important organs like lungs and you know start infecting them we then have secretions so these are fluids which are secreted from the body including sweat glands um hair follicles and urine uh, so sorry so fluids are created from these specific parts of sweat glands hair follicles and urinary tract and what they do is they aim to um flush out pathogens and they're also antimicrobial last but not least the skin the skin itself is a protective layer um if you've sort of had a chance to go learn a bit about skin you'd notice that um the skin that you know we have right now it's it's a protective layer um what we have underneath this part is what is called the true skin and that's the epidermis that's the actual you know um skin this is basically a protective layer for us and it um secretes so the pores in our skin secretes antimicrobials and the outer layer of skin is constantly shedding as well um and that is, again, so that we are getting rid of any pathogens that are on there. Um, and obviously our cells need to, um, our cells need to grow.
So the first barrier is the skin, the second barrier is the cilia, then we've got chemical barriers, um, and so on. So these two are related, I guess. So we've got cilia and mucous membranes, chemical barriers and secretions, and the first one is the skin. So that's the main one, then we've got cilia, then we've got chemical barriers. So it's in the form where, you know, this is like... At the very beginning, the pathogen will encounter. If it makes past the skin, it's going to encounter the cilia. And if it makes past the cilia, it's going to encounter the chemical barriers um, in the body. Okay, so we now look at basically the first line of defense in a nutshell. Is that we've got the body's mechanical barriers. Here's a pathogen trying to get in. Let me in, let me in. But it's fine to get hard. But obviously we know that they do tend to make it in sometimes. But most of the times the uh, mechanical barriers do a pretty good job of uh, protecting the body. 